5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. You guys might be familiar with this here. This is a cell to cell theory, which came about in the 1800s. There was a couple of parts which already came about beforehand, but the major addition to the cell theory came about in the 1800s. So by the 1800s, we knew that all living things are composed of cells. That's one part of the cell theory. And that cells are the basic unit of structure and function of living cells. So that cells were important. But there's a third one which was missing. A third statement about the cell theory. Now there's a really important person you should know, and that is that person is Louis Pasteur. And what he did is he looked at fermentation, right? So there was people made wine, people made beer, and people didn't really realize why beer and wine came about. They just know that it happens, right? Fermentation happens, and all of a sudden we have beer, we have wine, we have other things, sauerkraut included. That was fermentation. And what Louis Pasteur realized is that we actually have a yeast, something which is microscopic, which we can't see with our eye, so that yeast is actually causing fermentation which was quite new. We used to think it was just something random that happened. No particular reason why fermentation happened, it just happened. But Louis Pasteur connected yeast with fermentation. So to put that third part of the cell theory into conclusion, what Louis Pasteur helped us to understand was that cells come from pre-existing cells. And the actual fermentation experiment was the first step for him to realize that there's more to life or there's more to things than just spontaneously things coming about that actually have a origin. Right? So now we do, for example, this might be bacteria. And nowadays we know that bacteria itself can replicate for binary fusion, which means we have one bacteria here and all of a sudden we have two. And that's how we can go from having nothing to or very little to having quite a big colony of bacteria in a pretty short period of time. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning all this is because the dot point itself says describe the contributions of Pascha and Koch to our understanding of the infectious of infectious disease. So this is so Louis Pascha helped us to come up with that pre-existing cell theory. And obviously I'm going to connect that with when it comes to the pre-existing cell theory and infectious disease, how they're linked. So I start with Louis Pascha. So Louis Pascha was a French scientist. And he was born in 1825, and he did most of experiments in the mid-1800s. So, mid-1800s. And he came up with quite a few really important things. So, first of all, he, for example, I told you earlier, he did quite a bit with fermentation. And he realized, for example, that if you wanted to make sure that wine doesn't go bad, what you do is you boil it. You boil the wine, and we call the boiling to kill bacteria, we call that pasteurization. So, that pasture comes from him, pasture. Pasteurization just means we boil something to high temperature, which means all the microorganisms inside are dead, and thereby we have no spoilage. So he came up with the, the idea of pasteurization, the idea of boiling something to kill the things which cause, for example, spoilage in wine. He also helped develop vaccinations, which obviously nowadays are very important. But his main, theory, main contribution, especially the one we have to look at in this video, is his contribution to germ theory. Because he came up with the idea that cells have to come from pre-existing cells, we didn't used to know what actually causes disease. So when it comes to disease, we used to think that, for example, disease might be caused by bad air. Right? So it's just the air itself which somehow causes disease, or that, for example, you might just be unlucky and for whatever reason, you just have it. So, so there's no luck. Or that you know, God gives you disease or whatever else. So there is all these theories which weren't grounded in science because we didn't know enough back then. But comes when Pasteur came, he came up that cells come from pre-existing cells. So he said that disease now, he, he linked disease to the idea of, of germs. And in particular, these bad germs, which are the, the um, pathogens. So he said that the pathogens were the ones which actually cause our disease, not the bad air or bad luck. It's pathogens, which we can't see, but that might invade our body, which cause disease. So that was done by Louis Pasteur, and he proved that with an experiment, which we'll actually cover in the next video. We'll, this is the experiment he did, we'll cover in the next video. But he managed to prove his theory, or give, give more evidence to his theory. That was Louis Pasteur. So remember, he came up with pasteurization and vaccinations. These are two really important breakthroughs. 
but he also, this is his most important contribution when it comes to understanding, because the document says understanding, so understanding of infectious disease, was his contribution to germ theory. And it's all about his understanding that cells come from pre-existing cells, thereby he could explain how, for example, out of the blue, we would have be, be sick, because there might only be one small bacteria in us, but that bacteria could then replicate, and eventually we would have lots of bacteria in us, and these bacteria could be enough to cause us harm. It could be bacteria, it could be viruses, whatever else it is. That's Louis Pasteur. And we also have to talk about someone called Robert Koch. Now, I'm German, and I insist you guys practice saying Koch. I know Australians love to say Koch instead of Koch, but the actual way you say it is, is Koch. So his name is Robert Koch, and Koch actually is German for cook, so Robert Cook is his English name. And he had two important contributions. First of all, he came up with the idea of the agar plate, which is obviously important when it comes to growing microbes. You might use that in school already. That's one of his contributions. And the other one were Koch's postulates. Now, for this top point, you in particular need to know about Koch's postulates and how that relates to infectious disease. Now, what he did, so there's four steps when it comes to Koch's postulates. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to have a way to identify pathogenic organisms. So let's, for example, assume there is a virus, so a flu virus, and this flu virus kills, right? So this flu virus kills. We want to make sure we know, that we want to be able to prove that this exact flu virus is killing all these different types of organisms. So there's four, four steps we have to do. First of all, we have to look at organisms that we're looking at. So in this case, again, I'm sorry about the actual drawing. I don't actually know what this was meant to be. It's kind of like a rabbit crossed with an insect. But just imagine this is some kind of animal. And this pink means, pink means they're dead. Right? So all of these organisms are dead. And we want to show that the flu virus is killing these organisms. So what we do first is we take, we look at their blood, right? So we look at the blood of all of these animals. So we grab some of their blood and look look at their blood under the microscope. And we hope to find that pathogen that caused the flu virus. So let's say this is these green, uh, these blue dots are flu virus. And we can find the flu virus in every one of those, in the blood of every one of those animals that was dead. So now that's already our first proof that it might have been that flu virus which killed these animals. So what we do next is we grab the actual flu virus and put it on an agar plate. So we, we isolate it from the actual animal and put it on, on an agar plate. That's why I had to come, that's why I came up with the idea of the agar plate because he actually needed to prove his cost potch plates. But his agar plate is just nutrition for the actual virus to grow. And once it's got everything, actually it's probably a bad example because viruses can't grow. Let's say I'm not taking a virus. Viruses can't replicate, I'm gonna take a bacteria. So whatever this bacteria was, this is the same, it's a bacteria, right? So the bacteria is put on these agar plates and for that to be correct, they need to be able to grow. So we not only have to find them in each of their actual bodies, we also need to be able to grow them on agar plate. And let's say we found them, so step one is good. And step two is also good because we managed to grow them on an agar plate in each of those cases. So the third step is what happens if we take the same bacteria that we just grew on agar plates and put them into an unaffected. So green means not affected. So we want to show that if we put this if this um, bacteria into the insect rabbit, that this insect rabbit will also die because it then has that same bacteria which will kill it. So what we do is we take it and inject it into our poor insect rabbit. And if every if it's causing disease, what should happen is this rabbit should also die. So let's assume it also dies. So thereby, okay, we've found out that the actual that part must be correct as well. The bacteria seems to not just we can't just we cannot find it in the in the dead organisms. We can grow it in the lab, and if we put it into a non-affected organism, it will also die. So thereby, again, giving more, further evidence that this actually is a problem for the insect rabbit. And then last step we have to do again is we have to take a sample of the blood, find that same bacteria in the blood. So we'll see it, okay, we have that same bacteria in the blood. And then also put it on an agar plate and grow it again. Just to prove that this bacteria is still in the actual dead organism, so that this bacteria must have been the thing that killed it. 
So there's four steps to proving so Koch's postulates was used to identify that a certain organism is causing a certain disease. In this case, we had our insect rabbits, and we found them all to be dead. Then we found a bacteria in all of their blood, so we suspected that, that bacteria was causing them to die. What we had to do then is after we found that each of them had it, we had to put it out and grow them on an agar plate in isolation in the lab. That also happened, so that worked. Next step is to show that if we inject it into a live animal, the live animal will also be affected, thereby proving that this bacteria causes disease. And it happens, so that in this case, the insect rabbit died. And then what we still had to do is we had to grab some blood, show that the bacteria is still there in its original form, and that we could still grow it on a agar plate, just to show that the bacteria didn't change or anything else didn't change, it's still there as it was meant to be. And those four steps is still what we do today, to link a certain pathogen to a certain disease. And we look at all the different organisms that have it, see if they have all the same bacteria or pathogen in it, then grow it, then inject it into something which is not affected to see if it's also going to get the disease, and then take its blood, the thing that got affected, and see if it still has the same microorganism or pathogen inside its blood. And that's what Robert Koch is famous for. So I'll quickly go over the point again, describe the contributions of Pasteur and Koch to understanding of infectious disease. Louis Pasteur came up with the germ theory after he proved that cells come from pre-existing cells. So he could explain why, for example, disease was not caused by bad air or bad luck, but actually by germs, in particular these bad germs, which we call pathogens. And because they could replicate, that means even if we only get one of the germs inside of us, which is a tiny, tiny thing, and these could replicate, and make many more, and eventually give us disease. That was Louis Pasteur. And Robert Koch, he came up with the agaplate, but more importantly, he came up with the Koch's postulates, which is a way of connecting a certain pathogen to a certain disease. And it's these four steps. First, you gotta find all the different types of organisms that, ha that you think have a disease. Then you look at their blood, and see if they have the same organism that you suspect is causing disease. And what you do is you, on every, every one of those animals, you try to grow it, in isolation. Next step is to infect an unaffected one to see if it also gets disease. If that's the case, the fourth step is to take the actual blood of that affected one, newly affected one, and see if you can grow it in isolation like you did in step two. If all those are ticks, that means you can collect, you can link your pathogen and your disease together. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.